Last season, Wolves were on the verge of qualifying for European football before bottling it at literally the final hurdle. Fast forward 12 months later and, well, nothing's changed. What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot. It's episode number 19. Today we return with the season finale as we take on the Cherries, Bournemouth. That's last season. The Cherries, Bournemouth away at the Vitality and also the Foxes at Molyneux on the final day as well. Missing the back-to-back, -back, well, was going to be back-to-back -back Golden Boot winner, uh, Raul Jimenez. And still could be as we play our final two games in the Premier League knowing that we might once again choke, potentially, on the final day. So right now the situation is this, we're in fourth place, we can't finish any higher than that, there are two games to go. The Gunners do have a game in hand, and if they win that, they'll leapfrog us on the goal difference. We're three clear of them, we're four clear of Chelsea and Spurs, and now being nine clear of and they can't catch up. So the lowest we can finish is seventh, but as we know, due to Leeds' place in the Europa Conference League final, which they qualified for, I played for off-camera and didn't indeed win the second leg of the semi-final, they're in the Europa Conference League final, if they win Win that seventh will go as a European spot, and that'll mean it'll need to be top six. How confident are you in me of making sure we don't lose our final two games? So, yeah, the first of the two is indeed Bournemouth. Before we get there, though, some big games come in at 3 p.m. and also at midday as well in the race for European qualification. The Gunner is away at Brownwell Lane. That's 3 p.m. And the first one is Spurs versus West Ham. So we'll process through these together with our fingers crossed, hoping that West Ham can do us a favour there in the London rivalry at midday. And we shall find out together what those fixtures did. And no, nope, Spurs won and Arsenal won as well. <laughs> Can someone do us a bloody favour? So that means we did drop down to fifth place then in the table. Spurs cut the gap to one. Though of course, we have the game in hand, though. They've now got a better goal difference record. So we know if we're going to do it, qualify for European football, it's all on us. Good luck. So, yeah, first game, uh, Bournemouth away. Nothing for them to play for. Uh, they are already guaranteed to finish in a Premier League position for next season. They're safe. Mid-table is the best they can do. And this is our team heading into the game. As we know, no Raul Jimenez for the rest of the season. Of all the players to get injured for the final running, typical. And this is our team. 43 on Patricio and goal. But for about Nuri, Cody, Big Chris and Semedo. With Nevers and Forsby through the middle. Traore and Nato, the inside forwards. And Mutina supporting Fabio Silva. The pressure on the 19-year-old shoulders with two games to go is... Unbelievable. Can he handle it? On the bench, Bettinelli, Bolly, Roberts, Ward, Prowse, Potence, Trincao, and Patrick Cutrone as well. First of the two. Bournemouth away. They've got nothing to play for. Come on, Wolves. All we need is one win, and that will do it. And I'm expecting a win so we can qualify for the Europa League. You know, we had those two nil-nil draws in a row. I was thinking, just one win. It's all we bloody need, and we couldn't even do that against sides right now down the bottom of the table. But it's our final away day, and I'd love to come back home with European football in the bag. But after last season's bottle job, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens again. When I said we fell at the final hurdle, literally last season, I mean, we genuinely did. If you didn't watch the finale last season, we were 1-0 up on Brighton, and the win would have given us European football. We conceded in the last minute of normal time, which is just typical. Brighton had nothing to play for themselves that day, and honestly, I can just see it happening again. I really can. Bournemouth and Leicester, nothing to play for. But I don't know what's happened to us, man. We just choke it. Just like last season, David Brooks on the move. Tackled by Morton Forsby. And Traore picks it up. And goes on the run. And hits the side moon. Come on. They try and stay calm. But, um, you know, European football's on the line. <laughs> As is our precarious financial situation as well, as we've discussed. Moutinho, Nato, oh. <laughs> Wolves lead. I don't know if I can remain calm for the entirety of the 90 minutes. That is a glorious little ball by Pedro Nato. And there is the 19-year-old with the pressure on his shoulders to put it into the bottom corner. Now there's a long, long, long way to go. And we were in this position last season on that final day against Brighton, leading and then throwing away the two points that cost us European football at the death. So I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself here. Come on, 
going to the break, leading by one, and there'll be a bit more confidence in me. But as Alberto Moreno has Nelson Semedo to beat, he can't beat the Portuguese fullback. We'll play out from the back, and Fabio Silva does well to hold the ball up and then give it straight to former teammate Dendonka, who fires wide. So bloody nervous right now. Haven't played especially well so far. So whilst things are going well in terms of the scoreline, I know we're capable of better. Second half to begin. And at the moment, this will give us European football. At the moment. But we're six minutes into the second half. So there is a long way to go. And I'm so nervous, man. And, oh. Oh. I thought he was offside. Oh, jeez. How many, like, goal-saving blocks do we see in FM this year? It's mental. I thought Trail was certain to bury that. It's still 1-0. And Sam Surridge had just over. God, these are going to be the longest 36 minutes of the save. Highlight after highlight after highlight is going to come now. You just know it. Seriously, it's big. Chris heads away that free kick. And NATO wins the foot race. But couldn't finish. Munir with the save, still 1-0. It's just typical in FM, isn't it? Like, when you want the game to speed up and the final sort to come sooner rather than later, it's just highlight after highlight after highlight, chance after chance after chance. The game just never stops. The ball never goes dead. And then in the games where you're desperate for a goal, for a leveler or a winner, it's like, <laughs> it seems like your team just passed the ball around for no reason for, like, 20 minutes, and it finishes up as a loss for yourself. But here's David Brooks around, like, Nuri. And Jones bangs one off the crossbar. I can't take this. Curtis Jones in FM this year normally turns into a monster. I think he scored a late winner against us in the reverse fixture, if I remember correctly, from the spot. But there's 13 minutes to go. And now we're in the final 10. Right. Now, I shouldn't be changing tactics when we're leading, but this is me we're talking about here. War Prowse on for the tie. Moutinho's energy through the middle for box to box. I think I'll also take off Traore on a booking for Daniel Pedence as well. And I'm tempted to bring on Cutrone for Fabio Silva in a moment. He just picked up a knock and is on the book in as well. Five minutes, guys. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Four minutes of added time. Cutrone pressing forward. I like a pressing forward when you're defending a one-goal lead. And if we can survive these four minutes of added time, we've got European football at Molyneux next season. One of four down. As Cutrone's come on as a pressing forward. And oh, you are. No. Right, this is not. Don't you even oh, think about it. There's a minute and a half separating us from European football. If we throw it away now, I'm going to kill myself. I mean, I'm not, obviously, because I still have match day 38 to play. And there'll still be a chance. <gasps> yes. Oh. My. God. The boys off the bench. Pedence to Wall Prowse to Cutrone. Hang on a bloody second. Did Doxy Boy just make a tactical change that benefited his team? What world are we living in? Don't need a second replay, FM. It's over. Wolves are heading to Europe. Hands on hips. Nice feminine stance. Well done, lads. Your performance has secured our qualification for the Europa League. But now... Oh, how quickly the mindset changes. But this is the mentality of a champion. We beat the Cherries on the South Coast. We qualify for the Europa League. The board set our initial budgets of 63 million. Lads, do you want to wait until we raise the bank balance first before you do that? <laughs> Why does it come so early? But the mindset of a champion is the guy that's always looking forward and looking to improve and deliver better results. One game to go, Arsenal win their game in hand, they leapfrog us on goal difference, but that's the way at Old Trafford failed to do that, and will be one win away from the Champions League. Think big boys, this season is far from done. Now, there are some games on the Sunday, but I don't think any of them are affecting us at all. No, they're not. Uh, oh, actually, no. Chelsea away at the Etihad Stadium at 3 p.m. today. Actually, no. We're now seven points clear. Oh, I thought it was six. So we're now seven points clear. So actually, Chelsea can't catch us no matter what. 
So that does not matter to us now. Now again, Arsenal's game against uh, Manchester United is here on the Wednesday. So we'll process through that together. If Arsenal fail to win, we're in fourth heading into the final day. When you talk about pressure, fuck me. Oh, bollocks. But we are going to miss the mental man for the final day. And that could give us the edge. I could give him injections, which I never ever do. But I'll make an exception for Morton. You're not missing the final day, mate. We need you. Oh, wait. Oh, what? Oh. Sorry, Morton. Morton, I need you. Oh, he's dropped the unfairly concerned issues. Excellent. Am I still in his favour personnel? Oh, yeah. Just a little tiff. Nothing serious. We're still best buds. So, this is the Wednesday. This is the evening. And this is the game. Manchester United versus Arsenal. Both teams with so much at stake. Red Devils win this and they've effectively won the title. Arsenal win this and they're in a driving seat for fourth heading into the final day. Come on, Ollie. Come on, Ollie. Yes! Yes! We just need a point against Leicester. I s if we bottle this, I swear. So, final day of the season. Wolverhampton Wanderers are one point away from playing Champions League football next season. How's your nerves, boys? Oh my goodness gracious me, how quickly things have changed. Now the Gunners, by the way, they're at home to Brentford who have already been relegated, so that should be a banker there at the Emirates Stadium. Spurs can't catch us now, obviously Chelsea can't either, so it is basically just us versus Arsenal head-to-head -head for that fourth and final CL spot. Again, because of the goal difference record, all we need is a point, but if we lose an Arsenal win, then we drop down to fifth place. So heading into the game, we just make the one change uh, from the victory against Bournemouth. That's because Forsby rejected the painkillers we could play him but I never like to play players with knocks I didn't really want to give him painkillers anyway to be fair so Forsby's going to miss out on the final day if we lose today I know what I'm blaming it on so this is our team Patricia's in goal but I've always like Nuri, Cody, Big Chris and Samada by the way can I just say for Big Chris as well started the season off with that gaff against Spurs since then He's been really good. Now he's a wall through the middle. Trejo and Nato, the inside forwards. And Mutina supports Fabio Silva up top. On the bench, Bettinelli, Bolly, Roberts, Jordao, Pedence, Trincao, and Coutrone as well. Second and final game. We're one point away from the Champions League. So let's just keep it calm, yeah? Come on, Wolves. Tell you what, if we pull this off, I'm going to be absolutely buzzing. I came into the episode like so defeatist and negative because of what happened last season. Choking on the final day. Literally in the final minute of normal time to Brighton. Um, but instead, that big win against Bournemouth and Manchester United beating Arsenal, all the stars have aligned for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Just got to make sure we don't blind ourselves now. As TD Mans finds Oscar, he turns like Nuri and drills it, literally fractions wide of that far post. It's alright, I haven't got going yet, but you know, plenty of time. But I don't want to see us fall behind inside the first half an hour as Harvey Barnes finds James Justin. Plenty of space for the versatile fullback. And Danny Ings is denied by one of the best goalkeepers, if not the best goalkeeper. No, the best goalkeeper I've used in FM21. Rui is just unreal. Come on, seriously, boys. It's Fabio Silva. I'll flow to NATO. We yet to do anything in this game. It's Champions League football online. Forget. The anti-jinx in full effect. Get the fuck in! Tenth of the season for Pedro Neto. And as good as Francisco Trincao has been in this final third of the campaign, I've preferred our Portuguese winger, not the man on loan. Neto, rival... Brentford a level at the Emirates. And it was Tony! <laughs> oh, this is just poetic. Arsenal have been shocked in North London courtesy of I'm gonna say my greatest goal scorer ever in my FIFA CM saves oh I am absolutely gleaming five minutes after the restart go a second goal up and surely we won't throw it away from this position Wall Prowse Fabio Silva just couldn't latch onto it does pick up the loose ball oh for f you are having a laugh what did I say in a recent episode? How on the final day, I would absolutely love it if Moutinho scored the goal to give us Champions League football. Well, he didn't score our first, but he scored our second off to China in a couple of weeks. But how does the 35-year-old bow out with perhaps the clincher? Oh, Zhao. Wolves. Legend.
Oh, this is amazing. Okay, calm it down. Calm it down. You know what happened last season. Don't jinx it. Come on now. As big Chris clears and NATO is after it. And I tell you, if we go free in the dark, that's it. We're popping open the champagne, boys. Fabio Silva on the hold up. Back heels to Moutinho. Now NATO back to the vet. Silva rolls through Semedo to secure it. Vince Carter, it's over. Wolves are in the Champions League. Oh my God, we're going to get a fourth. We're not going to get a fourth, are we? Jeez, lads. Where was this in the last episode? Hang on a second. We're not going to get a fifth, are we? Surely not. No, Semedo tackled and, and Leicester clip. Gee, where has this come from? From choking it to just playing like it doesn't matter to us. Madison down the left, back to Ndidi, but the, the game's done. Leicester need five in 22 minutes, and listen, we might have choked last season historically badly, but this would take it to a new level. Fabio Silva, by the way, has got a hat-trick of assists today. Just noticed that. Extraordinary. I said, how would a 19-year-old handle the pressure? He said, pressure. What pressure? Is that how Fabio Silva sounds? I don't know. I haven't heard him do an interview. Anyway, we're forward it up with 15 minutes to go. It's party time, baby. The champagne's popping. Leicester can have a goal if they want. I don't mind. We'll give them a free one. Justin down the right to Harvey Parnes. And now yeah, right, they can have it. It's 4-1. It's doesn't matter. Job's done. To be honest, all I want now is to find a whistle. The Gunners are back in front against Brentford. But again, it's not going to matter now. Um, it's one of those games where I mentioned it earlier. Like, literally, you just want to find a whistle. And then it's like, nope, highlight, nope, highlight, nope, highlight. Justin's cross, Madison scores. How many minutes are left? No, we're fine. We're fine. Five, oh, you, n right. Okay, now, for a second, I was joking. And, and okay, it's fine, it's fine. We cleared the date. Jeez, I, mean, I don't even know this game sometimes, honestly. Literally drives me insane. Francisco off the bench, possibly his final appearance for the club, has his shot easily saved. Look, we just get the final whistle blown now. Trincao on the move. Dances round a couple of blue shirts. Needs a teammate though, so flows to Pedenza to boys off the bench. Link up. And now Ruben Nevers into James. And that ball should have been turned in for a fifth. I can't believe I'm sitting here thinking, until we get a fifth goal, I'm putting the champagne back on ice. Oh, for God. Look, okay, it was funny at first. But... <laughs> Just stop now. Just, right, stop it now. Stop it. Leicester have scored three goals in 18 minutes and Patricio really should have saved that now there are 30 seconds of stoppage time to come and it's over oh my god how do we go from 4-0 up drinking champagne and only win the game by a goal it was 14 minutes to go what on earth happened there I mean look do you know what it's done so Forget what happened in the final 15 minutes. We still won. And that means we've done it. The Gunners did indeed win in the end. Despite Ivan Tony's best efforts. And Wolverhampton Wanderers are heading to the Champions League. I assume. 32 mil finishing in the top four. But I'm just wondering. Because it says EC. Oh, not this again. Oh, I just, I just, I re I, I just remembered something. I just remembered something. Arsenal in the Champions League final. I just remembered Arsenal in the Champions League final. They had the semi, but... Yeah, they beat Man City. That was on a Tuesday. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, I remember now, I was processing through to the, uh, the Bournemouth game to start today's episode off, and I saw the Gunners get through to the final, and then Leeds get through to the final directly afterwards in the Europa Conference League. So, well, the, the thing is, we've at least got Europa League football. Nothing's ever simple in Football Manager World, is it? Nothing's ever simple. Um, <laughs> it's the end of season awards, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't really care. Tell you what, though, what great signings we had this year. War Prowl site, Nuri. Um, and of course, Big Chris all did really well. Um, I get a B. I get a B for fourth place. Gee, this board absolutely hate me, don't they? So, fans player of the season went to Patricio. Great decision to give him a contract extension. Big Chris somehow won young player of the year at 24. 20, look, okay, look, as a 28-year-old, obviously I'd like to say that 24 is still young. And it is. But not in football manager world. Signing went to Rayan and... Um, 
Yeah, there we go. Oh, did Jimenez win the golden boot, by the way? Or did, did Werner end up topping him in the end? Um, oh, wow, Jimenez won it back to back. He must have played fewer games than he did indeed. Anthony Martial and Timo Werner as well. Jimenez with the Jimenez with the back to back golden boots this year. 20, uh, 26 games, 17 goals. That's impressive. So maybe I should stop slating him off so much. Um, as we see, the club vision, uh, it is to remain in the top half of the Premier League. Now, the board say we're going into the Europa League next year and need to reach the semi-final. So they're pretty confident the Gunners are going to win the Champions League. I'm going to say to the boys here that we can qualify for the Europa League next year. And they say it's unrealistic. How? We just finished fourth. I never understand some of this. All right. Okay. Let's just look to finish top half. You got nothing to say. Well, you did a minute ago, mate. We'll look to reach the latter stage of the Europa League next year. Yep, that's sensible, apparently. Um, excellent. Right, so the boys are going away, but we're not. We need to get through to the 28th of May and find out who wins that Champions League. Jeez. Um, can you say Northwest dominance in the team of the year? Raul Jimenez, <laughs> the only player outside of Manchester United and Liverpool in the team of the season. Representing the Wolverhampton Wanderers, you got to love it. So just before the CL final, there's the FA Cup final between Manchester United and Liverpool. Obviously, it doesn't really matter to us after our fourth round exit, but the Red Devils did indeed complete a domestic double this year. So what we'll do is we'll process through the CL final, that's the 28th of May, and then we'll leave it there. The suspense right now, are we going to the Champions League or the Europa League? When is the Europa Conference League final, by the way? Because I haven't... I haven't got any kind of notifications or stoppages of that. So, lead schedule. Um, that Oh, it's, it's tonight. Okay, so that's tonight. The Europa Conference League final. I don't actually know, again, what the winners would qualify for if they failed to qualify for a European competition via their league. I think it would be the Europa League, so it goes one step up, like the Europa League is your Champions League. But I guess we'll find out now together. Leeds, did they win or did they lose that Europa Conference League final against Sporting Lisbon? They did indeed win it. So what are Leeds doing next year? I thought there was a way to find out via the rules section, but I, I had a look and I couldn't find anything, unless I'm being completely... Oh, no, there it is. Continental qualification. How'd I miss that? Winner qualifies for the Europa League group stage. Now, right. I, I, I still don't think this should matter, because surely if we drop down one, like Leeds can have Europa League, Spurs will get Europa Conference League, and, and if Arsenal get the Champions League, we'll get Europa League, and Chelsea get nothing. I think, at this point... That's what happened if Arsenal beat PSG. It's so bloody confusing, I tell you. And Chelsea just won the Europa League. Che I, Chelsea just... You are having a laugh. Why are all these English sides winning every European competition? Chelsea just beat Villarreal. Now, now, what does that mean? Oh, this is ridiculous. This is... Di you, how could I possibly miss out on everything despite finishing fourth? If that happens, I'm finished. So... It does mean we won't get Champions League now because Chelsea won the Europa League. So it is Europa League and not Champions League. But, sh no. I don't want to play anymore. I don't. This is too much. Well, we've got Europa League football or not. This is too much for me. This is... Now, I, what, do you, what do you mean we call it? I don't understand. What is, what is going on? I'm getting so confused. So there'll be five of us in the Champions League next year. But what if Arsenal win the Europa League? Then is there... St you can't have six teams in the Champions League, surely. You might as well put bloody Norwich in it at this point. Um, well, the Champions League just been played because it was a Saturday. And, oh, okay, well, well okay, all right, PSG won it. So at least that means for sure, no matter what, we've at least got Europa League. Oh, Marco Verratti, you little beauty. Giving PSG the win right deep into added time and stoppage time. Uh, an extra time, sorry. And and that does... Okay, so that does mean that there'll be five of us in the Champions League. I, I, I thought that fourth would drop off, but maybe not. There must be a recent example where this happened. I can't think of one on the top of my head. But there we go. It's Champions League according to the game. <laughs> I still, I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced. But the game say so. So I'm going to go with what the game say. Wolves are in the Champions League for season three. We think. God, I literally have no words to describe that ending there. I mean, it was just a roller coaster of emotions. But it does seem that we have indeed got the Champions League. I think if Arsenal would have beat PSG, there's no way 
we would have had Champions League football next year. No way would there be six teams in the ECL, but it does seem as though we're heading there, courtesy of Marco Verratti and his PSG side. So, that will end the season finale of the FM Reboot, guys. A big fan, fortunate hope you have enjoyed it. Wolves overcome their demons of last year, even without the Mexican striker Jimenez, to reach European football and secure the big ticket in the Champions League as well. Have a fantastic day, guys. Thank you for watching Season 2 and the whole series so far. Much love to you all, and we will return in the very next episode with the new season, with Wolves in Europe, with the transfer special as well. And we're going to spend a lot of cash in the summer, I think, to make sure we're ready for it. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I will see you for the brand new season in our FM Ruby Wolves in the Champions League. We think. <laughs> Very soon. Bye, guys.